new complication, and we like to continue. So two complications, everyone knows compartment syndrome, osteomyelitis, we know, and third one is fat embolism. What is fat embolism is comes in the bone marrow and from fracture and release into the bloodstream. And when does the fat embolism comes? 48 to 72 hours. So remember, fat embolism, 48 to 72 hours. And what happens? The bones break and the fat goes in the blood. And what is fat embolism is leading to everyone should know pulmonary embolism. What is it leading here? Pulmonary embolism. So remember your questions are going to be, patient had a fracture, what are you going to prevent your patient from infection? You prevent patient from fat embolism. So immediately, that is why we immobilized your patient. You don't want them to move around. So what do you do in prevention? You have underneath the sign, immobilize. Don't let your patient move. So if there is a question, how do you prevent fat embolism? Your answer is immobilizing. Are we clear? What is fat embolism is leading into pulmonary embolism. Fat embolism is leading into what? Pulmonary embolism. What do you do here? Prevention of your patient. Now, what are the signs of fat embolism are? Underline the word, very important, the beginning. Whatever the way embolism is coming, but when they're saying pulmonary embolism, the earliest sign, petechia over the chest. That means there's more bruising around the chest. And there may be a question, patient fell, patient had fracture, patient is having petechia, what are you monitoring for? pulmonary embolism. So what is the sign of pulmonary embolism is petechia over the chest and the neck. <clears throat> Next is tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypotension. So pulmonary embolism we have done, but early sign is petechia. What is the second thing I want you to write down the word hypoxia? What is the problem here? They're not getting oxygen. Third thing is your patient is going into shock. And what happened in shock? Low blood pressure and pulse is high and respiration is, is higher. Now what would be here? So patient has fat embolism, fat embolism leading into pulmonary embolism. What is pulmonary embolism signs are? Earliest sign you will see petechia over the chest. What is pulmonary embolism is leading here? Hypoxia. What is the first sign of hypoxia? You have hypoxemia. Remember, what do you see when you have oxygen level is low? Your patient become restless. And then later on would be cyanosis and also they are having shortness of breath. Maybe they will say chest pain chest pain, cyanosis, dyspnea. So everyone remember sign and symptom of pulmonary embolism. What is sign and symptom of pulmonary embolism is petechia over chest, hypoxia, you have hypoxemia, lack of oxygen in the blood. What do you see early sign? Patient become restless, later sign, dyspnea, cyanosis, and chest pain. Patient is going into shock. So. We, that, we did all that in respiratory, but we must remember your fracture is leading into what? Pulmonary embolism. What is the word is called? Fat embolism. And what do you do if your patient has fat embolism? Is underline the word, raise the head of the bed and give the oxygen to the patient 100%. Give pain medication and give heparin. Now, what is the treatment here for pulmonary embolism is giving heparin. What do you monitor when you, how do you give heparin? You can give IV and you can give sub-Q. What do you monitor when you're giving any blood thinner? Bleeding. What do you monitor patient here? For bleeding. It's not one word bleeding. Maybe they're bleeding in the stool. A stool come back positive. 
that means sign of bleeding. And patient has hematuria, sign of bleeding. Patient is having hematemesis, sign of bleeding. Everyone is okay, three complications of patient with fractures are. What are the three complications are? Compartment syndrome. What is the treatment of compartment syndrome is? Bivalving and fasciotomy. What is second complication of fracture is osteomyelitis. How do you prevent osteomyelitis? Clean the wound and after patient is diagnosed for osteomyelitis, do the culture and start IV antibiotic. Patient is going to be in the hospital for a long time. Then patient is going home. You will also <coughs> teach them IV antibiotic. I talked about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, 100% that. And also they can do the squesterectomy. They remove the dead bone. When we are talking about fat embolism, you still prevent the patient to get fat embolism. How? By immobilizing. That's your answer. Then you monitor your patient for pulmonary embolism. Now I will move on crutches. Patient is using the crutches and doctor has ordered patient has fracture. We must know we talked about fractures, traction. We talked about the cast, but very important now crutch walking. In crutch walking, number one, patient, doctor has ordered the crutches. What is it important here? Measurement. Why? Underline the word, because if the crutches are too big, they damages in the first line brachial plexus. Under the axilla, the nerve and the brachial plexus. And if they give you a question, patient, you see a patient is ambulating and the crutches are very tight and snugly tight. That's not good. They should have a space between the axilla. So what does it damage if your crutches are not good? You've got to know for your exam, brachial plexus. Everyone is okay? And the distance from the axilla and the crutches should be two to three finger or write down one to two inches. In the inches, one to two inches or two to three fingers. So there should be a distance between the axilla. So add there one to two inches. Elbow flexion, very important for your exam. How do you keep the elbow when they're using the crutches 20 to 30 degree? And then you keep the crutches where, how far, 6 to 10, cross out the word degree and write down the word inches. What is it? 6 to 10 inches. And in front, cross out the word food, is misprint foot. And so 20 to 30 inches degree is the flexion, 6 to 10 inches in diagonal, diagonally, that means in the front of the foot. When you are ambulating your patient, always stand on the affected side. Don't let them rest on the axillary bar. On this side, very important, everyone should know brachial plexus. Everyone should know the distance between the axilla and the crutches and one to two inches or two to three finger. And how do your elbows are flexing? 20 to 30 degree. How far do you keep the uh, crutches? Six, six to 10 inches. Are we clear? Next page, you have the crutch walking. When, whenever you're going for your exam, you must know all your nursing intervention. Are we clear? And what are the nursing interventions are, number one, two finger, uh, two point gate. Two point gate crutches are, underline the word, limited weight bearing. What is the meaning limited weight bearing? Patient cannot put all their weight on their leg. That means limited. So doctor ordered limited weight bearing. What would you use two point gate? What do you use on two point gate? Underline on the second line, you take first thing, right leg. So write down the word, take the right leg first out, and then left side, the crutches. So you move the right leg and left crutch. You always go opposite. So you move the right leg, and what crutches we are moving here? Left side. So you have to go opposite. Then you move the left leg, and now you move the right crutches. Everyone is okay. So what leg we are moving here first? The right, 
the left crutch, then left leg, and the right crutch. So you are moving, so you are giving more weight on the, this. You are using two-point gain, and you are going simultaneously. One, then another one, then this side, then the other side, alternatively, or simultaneously. So two-point gait, very important, limited weight. What leg do you take first is you're moving the right leg, but what crutches you're moving? Opposite the left crutches. Three-point gait, you've got to add here, three-point gait is called non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing. So when we are saying three-point gait is non-weight bearing, they can, what is meaning non-weight? They cannot put the weight or partial weight. Partial means some weight. So if they're saying doctor has ordered non-weight bearing, what crutches you can take it? We can take it three-point gait. And what is three-point gait? Add there where it says the word weight, write down the word non-weight bearing or partial weight bearing. How do you do that? The legs, affected leg, weight bearing on affected leg, both crutches you move and affected leg. So you move what? Both crutches. And what leg you're moving with both crutches? Whatever the leg has been affected. You have right hip and right hip problem, so you move both crutches. You move with the both crutches are the leg. And then you leave the weight correct here, not an affected leg, correct here, write down the word unaffected leg. So leave the weight on unaffected leg. So remember, three-point gait, you're moving both crutches and affected leg together. Are we clear? And where do you leave the weight on unaffected leg? Number three. Number two and number three is almost same. Four-point gait. In four-point gait, here I said right leg. Now in four-point gait, move the left crutches and move the right, correct the spelling, foot and then right crutch and the left leg. In this one, you will go first moving the crutches. So what crutches we are moving here? The left crutch and then you move the right leg. Then you move the right uh, crutches and the left leg. Number five, swing through. Swing through is also used for non-weight bearing. So remember, if they give you a question, patient has non-weight bearing, you can go either three-point gait or swing through. What is swing through is you move both crutches are moved and both legs swing between the crutches. So they move the crutches and they swing on the crutches. That is a swing through. Now all are very important. Number six, going up on the stairs. When you are going up on the stairs, remember is leading with good leg up. So what are your take going up? with unaffected leg. What is unaffected? It means the good leg. Going up and then you move the crutches and the affected leg. So you put first the good leg, crutches and then affected leg. Then when you're going down, you lead down with the crutches and affected leg. So you move the leg, uh, le uh, leading with the crutches and the affected. In another word, go up with the good leg and come down with the bad leg. Okay, it's all up to you guys how, but make sure we all know the crutches, we make sure we know this wording. Cane, cane is uh, for exam, for partial weight bearing. And what do we do on canes are, number one, a stand, always stand on the unaffected side, and your height of the cane should be about hip size. And that is means the greater trochanter. Greater trochanter is in the hip, so that is your hip part and elbow flexion. Here is different elbow flexion, 15 to 30. Everyone should know elbow flexion on all of them. And where do you hold the cane? On four to six inches to the side and hold the cane, number four, unaffected side. So which side do we keep the cane? Unaffected side, are we clear? And then how do you move the leg? Next page, move the leg and the cane with the affected leg. So what are you moving? You're moving the cane and you're moving the affected leg. Then you have quad cane, hemi cane, and they depend which one the doctors have used. But remember, in the cane is the cane is on 
which side on the unaffected side. When they're moving cane, they got to move the weaker leg. Next is walker. Walker is almost same. The flexion is same as your crutches, 20 to 30 degree. And they are very stable, the walker. Stability with the wide base, and you're moving with the walker. When we are moving with the walker, underline the word, advance the walker. You keep the walker off for leg and advance the affected leg. So when you're moving the walker, what leg should go with the walker again? Affected leg. So that is your key for your answer. Your habit here, whatever you guys want to know. But yes, everyone should know your crutches, the walker, and your patient with ambulating with the Mm, crutches, walker, and cane. Now I will move on fracture hip. Hip of fracture hip or hip replacement. Open reduction. What is the meaning open re closed reduction? What did I say? They didn't do surgery. If they give you a question, patient has open reduction, that means they have cut it, they have fixed the bone, and patient is coming back after hip replacement. The word is called open reduction internal fixation. They fix the bone inside and patient had surgery. What do you monitor? First thing, patient come back after hip surgery are number one, bleeding. If they're bleeding, they're going to be in shock. So you, we all know the shock symptom. Number two, and no weight bearing. Patient come back immediately after hip surgery. Number two, no weight, no weight bearing. That means you're not putting any weight. So don't pick up answer to teach the patient to walk because you're not the one who is teaching the patient. So non-weight bearing. Number three, recliner is better than the straight chair. Why? To prevent flexion. And legs should not be more than 45 degrees. So when you are sitting, the meaning is add there the word flexion. Your leg should not be flexing more, this will go completely, is more 90 degree, but this is less flexion. When you flex more, what happens? It's going to affect the hip. So what are you preventing here? Flexion word. Everyone write down the word flexion, no more than 45 degree. What side do you turn your patient? Unaffected side and on the back. And what do you keep, number five, in between the leg pillow? Why? To keep them abduction. So what are we keeping here? Abduction. Abduction means away. You always have pillow between the legs and you are keeping abduction. Are we clear? And you are preventing the patient from getting your knees together and abduction. Anytime you teach your CNA, UAP, and make sure you tell them when you're turning your patient or you're doing anything, your pillow must be in between the legs. So two words is important here. Flexion word, no more than 45 degree flexion, and keep the leg abduction. That's a key answer. What side do you turn them is on unaffected side. Proper alignment and prevent external rotation. I want you to write down the word trochanter row. Trochanter, trochanter row. Trochanter roll is important to use. What is trochanter roll? By folding a blanket, whatever, and any question. How do you prevent your patient from rotation? Your best answer is going to be trochanter roll. You can also use pillow. You can also use sandbag. But mostly question, they love to see the word trochanter roll. Every nurse, we all should know, you're using preventing the rotation. And write down the word is trochanter roll. If you are elevating the head of the bed, don't keep it too high. 30 to 45 degree only for meals because if you're sitting too high, sitting too long is going to cause the pre pressure on the hip and will cause dislocation. Number nine, check the drainage side. If they have any kind of drainage, empty them. And number 10, avoid crossing the leg. Number 11, I want you to add there high toilet seat. So high toilet seat is important. And two word is very important here, prevent flexion and also keep the leg abduction. Those are 
your answers taking care of the hip fracture. I will go on knee replacement. What is a knee replacement? Which patient would have knee replacement? When they have a knee problem, they can take the weight, they have a lot of problem, and they have not been able to ambulate and had problem patient schedule for knee replacement. Patient come back after surgery on knee replacement is important. The word is CPM machine is used. So what is knee replacement is CPM machine. What is CPM means is continuous passive motion. Patient cannot move their leg and they have a lot of pain. So what is continuous passive? Passive. Patient is giving exercise passive. Passive means given exercise by the machine. And what is important when we are using CPM machine is to give them the word is flexion. And I'm going to have you highlight that there. So first thing is CPM machine is used. Now a lot of uh, people, different doctors, some doctors are using right away, but it is not used in the OR. Everyone should know that. Patient is not, CPM machine is used in recovery. Patient goes in the room, may be used after the next day. Some doctors are using after two to three days. And now I had my friend had just surgery, is uh, recently in knee surgery, and they gave CPM machine to use when she's going home. And so they gave the machine to do the exercise and she was discharged in three or four days and she is doing the exercise at that time. But in your question, first thing, make sure you know that it's not used in the recovery room and in the surgery. Some doctors start right away. Some doctors wait when the patient pain getting better and give them exercise. But CPM machine, I have seen, they start on the next day as soon as patient come. And what is CPM machine is you're giving passive motion. Patient must know they don't have to put the weight, number one. And they can ask you, what do you teach patient? Because machine is moving itself. They don't have to put the weight and doing exercise. Number two, pain is there. Analgesic pain medication when they are using machine is good. Number three, dangling of feet is never good. Uh, highlight that word. Number four, weight bearing and crutch walking you avoid right away. Number six is monitor the drainage. Now, uh, number five, number six, what is the goal for your patient here to restore what? Full flexion. Are we clear? Now remember, you can keep your legs straight when you have pain, but what would be the heart after knee surgery? Getting these muscles, exercise, and be able to use those muscle, the strength, and getting used to with the new knee replacement. So very important, what do you give them? The full restoring flexion. Are we clear? Extension, they can keep it, but what would be the hard thing is here, flexion. So why this machine is given to restore full flexion? Everyone is okay? Full flexion means they can bend their leg completely. And the leg should be kept, number eight, in proper alignment and maintain patella. Patella is your knee, is in the proper alignment. And when you're getting out of your patient, from the bed, make sure we use immobilizer, support the leg, and CPM machine is kept at the foot of the bed. CPM machine, first day, second, 45 degree, and should be on two hours and one hour off. And again, two hours on, they really want two hours exercise, and one hour not, and then take a rest and continue the exercise, but again, depend on patient tolerance. Every patient is different. So you can't force them that they got to do. Then they got to follow up, underline the word therapy. And they use the pump. And what they use also on the leg, the weight. So they can be able to give them exercise, lifting, bending, standing on that leg. That's important to give them continue exercise. Everyone is okay? So knee surgery, very important word is CPM machine.
I will move on on the next page. Quad exercise. What exercise are quad setting, gluteal setting, or they can use isometric exercise, that's good, but they can use the word quad and gluteal second, uh, setting and improving the circulation. Patient can be discharged in three to four days and they go follow up with physical therapy for exercise. Are we clear? So exercise are very important after the discharge and they have to do the follow-up appointment. So we must know knee surgery and hip surgery. I will move on amputation. We all know patient with amputation, they are coming back after amputation. What do you do as a nurse? What do you do as a nurse? Number one, patient come back after amputation, tourniquet. You must have tourniquet. What is a tourniquet? The rubber tubing. When you go to the lab and they tie the tourniquet in the hand, and why? If they start bleeding, it's a bigger area. So what do you do to stop bleeding? You tie the tourniquet. So tourniquet is kept in the room. And number two, what do you do as soon as patient come back? Elevate their uh, foot off the bed. And why? To reduce edema for 24 hours after the patient had surgery. After 24 to 48 hours, you will go on number three, underline the word, prawn position. So amputation patients is very important. Is after 24 hours, we put them in prawn position. And what are you preventing here? Again, the word right down on the top, flexion. If you keep elevating, it will cause flexion and you don't want the flexion to happen. They have no leg. So what happened? These legs are going to be backward and is the word is called, what is flexion? Bending. So you have no leg and you keep them up. So what would happen? These thighs, they will become more flexed. You don't want that. So what are we preventing here? Flexion word. Number three, is 24 to 48 hours front position. Number four, very important, they have trapeze bar and firm mattress, so they can move around. Number five, elevate, do not use the pillow to elevate the area. Number six, and don't use pillow underneath. And number six, elastic bandages. Why? To shrink the residual limb, and you want them, the amputee area, to shrink. Number seven is important to keep the area clean. Wash it, clean it, keep it dry. And number eight, massage the area, and when you're massaging or putting a lotion, well, go towards the suture line to prevent the adherent to the underlying bone. So massaging the skin area, towards the suture line is important. Amputation, there are two kinds of amputation, below knee and above knee amputation. What is below knee, you will prevent the patient, I want you, in below knee, in the second line, I underline the word flexion. Now what is the meaning flexion? Below knee means there's a part of leg, is still there. What is the meaning below knee? They cut it here and they have part of the leg. And what would happen if a patient sits all the time? This part of the leg is going to cause flexion, bending. Are we clear? So what are you preventing patient here is from flexion, below knee. And what would you teach patient? It says here, don't sit too long in the chair or edge of the bed. Because if they're sitting too long, it will cause flexion. So what does it mean? They should lay down, may go on prone position, and prevent what? Flexion. Third, second word, above knee. What is in above knee? There is no knee. And highlight the word rotation. What happened? There is the leg is not supporting well. And what would happen here is the word is called rotation. External so the thigh, the leg is moving, external or internal rotation. Underline the word trochanter roll. You can also use the pillow, you can use the towel, you can use the sandbag, 
but trochanter role is important. I want you to add on the side. If patient is having a pain, what is that pain is called? Phantom pain. What medication do you give? You can give them pain medication, but also if they ask you non-therapeutic treatment. What is a non-therapeutic treatment is? What is non-therapeutic treatment would be TENS unit. And what is TENS unit is? It's a pain management, has no medication. And what is TENS unit is doing? Blocking the pain and patient is not getting the pain. So what is it called? Blocking the pain center. So what is non-therapeutic means is you're not giving medication. And they say, what is the best is non-therapeutic treatment for patient with amputation? Your answer would be TENS unit. Are we clear? Pain medication is good. What are the complications are for amputation? I want you guys to write down there. Number one is bleeding, hemorrhage. And what is number two is phantom pain. <coughs> Patient has phantom pain. And number three is wound separation or wound infection. The wound has to be monitored because they're diabetic patient. And they are very high risk for wound infection or separation of the sutures and the wound infection. If you memorize that much, you will know all your answers you can give them correctly. And patient has amputation. There are below knee amputation, above knee amputation. Remember one word, you're preventing flexion. Now I will go on osteoporosis. When we are talking about osteoporosis, are the poor bones. And what do you do to prevent your patient with osteoporosis? What are the reason are on osteoporosis is number one, bone demineralization of the patient. So they have their <clears throat> bone problem and the bones are weaker and they're having a poor bone. Next is which part of the bone you're going to see with the patient with osteoporosis is vertebral column, underline that, and hip, they will start feeling on the problem. Age. Age is very important, underline the word estrogen level, especially menopausal women. After the periods, the hormones are affected. Next word is you have on there is smoking, sedentary lifestyle, smoking, you have alcohol, low calcium. You have prolonged therapy, number six, are steroids. I want you to write down the word here, A, C, C, E, S, S. A means alcohol use. Patient is using alcohol. So alcohol is number one, A. C. Corticosteroids, your medication. Corticosteroids, you're giving medication. Number next C, low calcium. So remember, that anybody who has low calcium is going to leave. E, estrogen level. Estrogen level. S, smoking. And Last one, sedentary lifestyle. What is the meaning sedentary lifestyle? Not emulating sitting all the time, right? Sedentary lifestyle. So write down A, C, C, E, S, S. And remember, those wording are important. Question may be, female patient, 80 years old, fell and had a fracture. What is the reason here? Older patient risk, female are risk, why? Estrogen level, because your estrogen level is low. When? When we have menopause. In your teaching, everyone remember, 
is alcohol. Is you've got to cut down alcohol and you've got to cut down smoking. For our exam, not all the all the time calcium problem. There are other reasons that we are not absorbing, we are not getting calcium. So remember, alcohol, very important, and you've got to cut down the smoking, and estrogen level is important. Sedentary lifestyle. What is the meaning for your patient? Where do you apply patient? Bedridden patient. Are we clear? Patient is laying in a bed every day. They're not getting any calcium in their bone. Sedentary lifestyle for people who are not walking around, but they're sitting and watching TV and eating. But what about the patient? Apply the same thing. Turn around your patient. What do you do as a nurse and you're working in a long-term care facility and your patient is laying every day in the bed? What is your responsibility here? To get them up in the chair. Have them ambulation. What is the best is? Not range of motion. When you are walking and putting a weight on the bone, your bones are absorbing. Are we clear? So if they give you a question, what is the best for your patient to give the improved calcium level? Your answer would be weight-bearing exercise. Are we clear? Weight-bearing exercise. See how a question, nothing to do with the books, is all what we are going to apply when we are going to do the patient care. So your everyone remember is older patient. Any question, older female, why? Because of menopause and their hormones is low. Sedentary lifestyle, you attach for your patient who are laying in a bed day by day. You've got to encourage, a patient cannot walk, even turning, getting out of the bed, laying in that position, no exercise for them. They don't have enough. Calcium is good. Smoking, alcohol, very important for your calcium. Calcium is very important for your everyday life as well as exam, as well as our patient when we are dealing with them. Data collection. What is the earliest sign for older people? You see they have osteoporosis is number one pain. And douges hum, bending like this, douges hum. And may lead to pathological fracture. So what is osteoporosis is leading? Pathological fracture. What is the earliest sign? Pain in the bone. And what would you see is more is douger hump. Nursing intervention. Ambulate your patient. Use them safety. If they have osteoporosis, what will happen? They're going to have fracture easily. When they're walking, make sure they use their walker. If they have cane, make sure they have cane. What happened, your patient is using glasses. Glasses are laying in the drawer. Patient is not using the glass. Nobody put it on. Patient is confused and they can see what will happen. They're going to fall. So number one, prevention. All your questions, safety number one. Number two, remember here in safety is using walker and cane. Calcium, vitamin D goes with calcium all the time. Then you will go diet. I want you to go in diet, increase calcium, increase vitamin D. And what do you decrease to increase calcium? What do you decrease? Phosphorus. Remember, in parathyroid gland I talk about. So whenever you want to increase calcium, sometime in your question it won't say increase calcium. It will say what? Decrease phosphorus. Automatically you are not eating phosphorus food and you have too much of phosphorus, your calcium is going to be low. So yes, we got to increase calcium, we got to increase vitamin D, but what do we need to remember? Decreasing phosphorus. So make sure we write down that wording where you have diet, increase calcium, but remember phosphorus. Food are good in calcium. What is the food is good in calcium? We all know milk product, okay? Yogurt is good, milk is good. But collard green, green leafy vegetables you have. We have molasses, you have bread and cereal, and all that is important. 
Next is medication. Very important, highlight the word, Fosamax. Fosamax is called in biphosphonate. Calcitonin, second line. Calcitonin is given when patient has hyperparathyroid. Write down that. That means they have too much of calcium in the blood and they're moving the calcium towards the bone. So I want you to write down where you have calcitonin. Calcitonin drug is given for patient with hyperparathyroid. The meaning is here, parathi parathyroid, hyperparathyroid, they have too much of calcium, but it's in the blood. The bones are not absorbing. This increased bone absorption for calcium. Are we clear? And also you are giving Fosamax. When we are getting older, you have a lot of poor bones and you have minerals problem. Estrogen for postmenopausal women. The last line, I want you to highlight the word <coughs> Avista. And those are some of the drugs and I will be going over a little later, but let's highlight for now. Now I will move on the word gout. What is gout is? So we all know a little bit about calcium, and I will be talking about the gout. Questions are, gout, underline the word, is uric acid. What is gout is? Too much of uric acid. Uric acid is going high, uric acid, and underline that, too much of uric acid, and also formation of uric acid deposit in the joint, and is also causing what here? Pain. What is the pain? Underline the word big toe. They have a lot of pain. What diet do we cut down when patient has gout? Is purine. Highlight the word. Uric acid comes from where? Purine. And underline the word painful joint. So what is in gout? Everyone remember? We are losing, what, what is it? Uric acid goes high. And what does it cause here, uric acid? Pain in the big toe and the joint. And uric acid comes from where? From the diet. So we'll be talking about the diet and cut down the purine acid, uh, purine diet. Third line, the word is called TOFI. What is the word TOFI? Is growth of uric crystal, crystals of the uric acid. And they form on the area such as outer ear. So what happened, those urate crystal deposits here and they make it a little harder and painful and it's called the word tofi. Everyone should know the word tofi. Primary gout is purine metabolism. Secondary gout means uric acid is high. Asymptomatic means no pain, no symptom, but uric acid is high. They have gout, but they are asymptomatic. What is asymptomatic? They don't feel pain, but the uric acid is high. So whenever you see the word is asymptomatic, patient don't feel any problem, but the blood is still showing the uric acid is high. Acute means excruciating pain. Acute means they have a lot of pain. Chronic means is repeated episodes of gout, and that result from the uric crystal. And chronic gout, underline the word. So what happened? Chronic gout, it affects the uric crystal organ. And where does it affect the uric acid? In the kidney. So what would be the problem if they have the gout? It can affect the kidney. Are we clear? So that would be affecting on the kidneys and leading to renal failure. So what does they will have in the kidneys, the renal failure? Data collection, we said they have a lot of pain on the big toe, toffee bird we said, and uric acid can cause also is itching, pruritus, and stone, and increasing because uric acid can lead to the uh, kidney stone. Diet for purine is no organ meat, and wine, egg cheese, beans are high in purine, oatmeal is high, Lobster, dried beans, and peas are there. 
And so remember, there's a lot of food. And your questions are going to be, as a nurse says, all your questions are going to be for diet. So we must know the diet. Let me finish the drug, then we will take the break. Treatment. What medication they give is colchicin. Underline that word for acute gout. Xyloprim is for chronic gout. So colchicin and xyloprim both are for gout patients. And what do you increase when you're giving medication? On the next page, fluid. Increase the fluid. Bed rest because they have pain. Avoid too much of flexion of the joint. Mild is okay. Heat or cold you can avoid. Anti-inflammatory medication to reduce inflammation. Diet, very important. And we, we finish this diet in the urinary system. And those who haven't done will be talking. But what is alkaline ash diet? I want you to write down to avoid acidity food, such as cranberry, plums, prunes. You avoid them, the food which are very high in acid. So you avoid that food. So what diet do you give when you have kidney stone? There are two diet comes, acid ash diet and alkaline ash diet. Alkaline ash diet is given for your patient with gout. Are we clear? You can give them milk, you can give them fruits, vegetable, but remember, what do you cut down here in alkaline acid diet are acid. Anything acidity you have, you cut down. And I gave you the example, cranberry, plums, and prunes, you don't give it to them. So let's take a break and then whatever left we'll cover and 